<laughs> hey Zoo family, welcome to today's video. We are back in the kitchen. I know it's been a while, but Katie got a cookbook for Christmas and she has been wanting to learn how to cook things. So lately we've cooked, what have you helped me cook? Uh, chili and chicken and dumplings. Chili and chicken and dumplings. Both of those are like crock pot recipes. A little less complicated, a little less steps. Today, she wants to do something a little more, more complicated, a little more steps. Actually, a lot more steps. I haven't made this in a while because it has so many steps and it takes over an hour to prepare. So Katie, what are, what are we making? Do you know what it is? No. Chicken parm. We're making chicken, chicken parm. Chicken parmesan called chicken parm for short. And mom, yes. the basic steps are to what? Cut the chicken. And then she pounded the chicken already. Okay. And then we dredge it in egg, in an egg wash. Mm -hmm. And then we put breadcrumbs on it. And then we fry it. And then we bake it. Again, this is why I don't make this recipe a lot. The other recipes were easy because I just had to throw stuff in a pot. Yeah, this one you have to, like I said, dredge and all sorts of stuff. And then you fry, you put it in the oven, and then we actually broil the cheese. So we're doing different techniques, cooking techniques. Um, so we're gonna expose her to all of those today. Okay, so what's up first? Let's let's go for it. Okay, so we're gonna salt and pepper our chicken. Good, good. I like a lot of seasoning. Do you know what I saw? Those will be Do you mine. know what I saw? I saw a professional chef's season up here, and I had no idea why, but it seasons it evenly. I had no idea. So I learned something new this week. Okay, so here's the tricky part. You have to have a hand that's covered in egg, and you have to have a hand that's covered in breadcrumb, but you can't have them touching because then they get all cakey and gross and then you just lose breadcrumb. Okay. So I we're gonna dredge with the egg and then we're gonna dredge with the breadcrumb, breadcrumb and then we're gonna put it on the pan. So put it right into the egg. Yep, put Good. it in the egg. All Cover the way, all dip, in. total dip submerged. Yep. Like it's okay, no. bathing in water. Flip it Grab around. the other end. Good. Keep. There we go. Good. Okay, now. now we'll, okay. Right in, right, right in. in. Okay, now don't touch that one. Now you gotta get this hand. <laughs> use your, now use your dry hand to, to cover. cover. There you go. Good job. Great job. Yes. Okay, now we put it okay, on the wait, pan. Wait, wait. If you're like me, okay. put it put it down. Put it down. Take, grab some okay. bread and throw it on top. Yep. Yeah. Every Make nook sure. and cranny. I love yep. a lot of breadcrumbs. Don't, 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 don't let that hand go in here. There you go. That's what mom means by dry hand. Yes. Good, good. Okay, now shake awesome. off the excess. Oh but it's delicious. It's delicious. Okay, now you're gonna lay them like this. Lay them like that, and we'll go Perfect. fry them in a little bit. And okay, now just do, uh, you know, 10 more of those or so. While she's preparing all of our uh, chicken to be fried before it is finished in the oven, I'll let you know that today's video is a sponsored video by MSMK. They sent us their 12 inch nonstick frying pan with lid, and um, it means business. This thing is like the tank of frying pans. Rather than just trying to fry something simple, like, you know, some chicken in it, we wanted to put it through some uh, stress testing and, and non-stick testing to see if it's really as non-stick as they say it is. And we did that earlier, and I'll show that to you now. So in order to test these out, um, we're gonna do a few things. I'm gonna try and actually fry an egg, which I'm a scrambled egg sort of guy, but that's not, and that's not gonna be the magic of it all. We're gonna fry an egg and see if it truly slides off out of the frying pan as easy as it does in those infomercials where they tell you send three easy payments of twenty dollars to get this frying pan and look what it does and the egg flies out and you're like is it really that non-stick we're going to stress test that we're also going to try and um see if we can get anything stuck to it and i'm going to burn some milk in it to try to do that something with a high fat content that's probably going to stink or we're going to have to turn the hood on and all that this is why melanie and katie don't want to do this part and then um and then we're going to see if it truly can handle the highest temperature setting in our oven because most of these pans like the one we've been using here at home for for years our standard that we use for a lot of meals that melanie typically uses to make chicken parmesan is um is only, I think, safe to like 350 degrees or four or 450. The MSMK says that it's safe up to, I think, 700 degrees. So that's a, that's a big deal. So we want to actually crank up the oven, put it in there and just watch it do nothing <laughs> because it should be fine, right? So you can also see that the design is uh, not too unsimilar. I mean, they both have this Y shape 
um, makes it feel like as you're holding it, you really have a strong, a strong grip on it rather than than a handle that uh, only connects to the the base at one point. One thing I will say is that the glass top here has a little place for steam to escape, which can be really helpful. Um, you know, in in certain recipes, anyways. Uh, so you know. It, their, their design is fairly similar. I will say the MSMK is heavier. It feels more substantial um, and and the handle is a little wider. So it feels, I don't know, easier to grip, I guess. Or I feel like I have a more solid hold on it than I would with this one that has the, the, uh, the thinner grip. You can see the comparison of the grips right here. So first we're gonna do the egg and um, I'm not gonna do any tricks. I know some people will pour a little water in there to create some steam, put the lid on. I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna help it. I wanna test the ability of an egg to stick. So I'm just gonna put the egg in, put the lid on, let it cook for a while. And when it good, looks good and edible, we're gonna see if it slides off onto a pan. So Melanie, bring it in close. I'm gonna dump it right here in the corner here, right there. There we go. Put my lid on. Okay, we got our fried egg. Let's see if it moves. Here's the test. It's hey, moving! Hey, awesome. <laughs> that means it should come right off on the plate. Look at that. For all of the infomercials, I thought we're faking it. Um, experiment number one, success, or at least with the MSMK, success. For uh, test number two, we have milk. And I've never poured milk in a pan other than what heavy cream with some white cooking wine to make Alfredo. So we'll see what this does. It's super hot. I put it on high just for proof here. It's been sitting here for a good while. It's really hot. It's on the, the maximum heat setting and I have the outer ring turned on. So it's trying to boil water now basically is what it's trying to do. I don't want to splash anywhere. Okay, you can hear it immediately. Yeah, this would just be so bad for any other type of pan, right? I wouldn't want to clean it. I wouldn't want to clean it either. <laughs> and you can see the moisture immediately starts trying to escape and go find some place to not be burned up. But it would, yeah, we're gonna let that boil, try and get the moisture to go away. You can see here, oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, all the parts that started to, to burn. <gasps> wow, I did not expect that. There's another thing I did not expect. Just be able to grab this and peel it back. That's very cool. That's surprising. Should make good pancakes out of this then. Yeah, yeah. Like when you're making pancakes, you sometimes get little bits that escape or drip. Yeah. Like they're not gonna stick. You're gonna be able to pull them right out with something like this. Like that's just amazing. Yeah, very, then that's just gonna make it easy to clean too. That's right. If you ever had an issue, you did burn something. You can see our last little bit of moisture is escaping here. Yeah, I would say that's a successful test. What would you say, Mel? I think it's good. Compared to, let me ask you. Uh, you Compared know, to the in, things in I of, burn typically? In front of a lot of people watching this video. You better be kind. <laughs> compared to things you've accidentally burnt in the past, and that's very rare for you. Things you burnt in the past, and uh, have you ever messed up? Look at that, look at that, all of it, it's there. Like that whole, it was probably a quarter cup of milk. It's like all right there. Um, compared to things you've accidentally burnt in the past, which is very rare, have you ever ruined a pan? I have actually ruined a okay. pan. Uh, how would you compare this to those experiences? <laughs> <laughs> no like, what a, ruined me under what the a stupid question to ask, right? Is this better or is this worse? Well, of since I've ruined a pan and this one's not ruined, I would say this is good. <laughs> Okay, I thought we'd have to turn the hood on and everything, and it was gonna be a nightmare, but you can see, I mean, judging from the pan, the little bit on the edge is not gonna, it's not gonna stick, it's gonna come, it's gonna come right off. Sometimes when people hear non-stick, they think nothing can stick, but when you're burning things, the, the, if you, when you accidentally burn something, the point is it's not gonna stick permanently. It's just gonna come off in the sink like that. Right. So without even cleaning it, I'm gonna throw it in the oven. Um, without cleaning without the Without cleaning it? Yeah, no, I'm just gonna okay. clean the oven. Why? Why be good to something we're trying to break? Oh my goodness gracious. I don't look in our put, oven, it's dirty. I don't even put it on this high, ever. Don't look in here, don't look in here. Now, how long do you think it will take to get to 550 degrees? Well, it's five, it is 550 in there. So I think, I mean. Look for the panda. We'll pull it, high. we'll pull it out in 20 minutes and. Are we gonna leave it on that long? 
Well, I was thinking like five. Listen, we're not trying to be nice here. We're trying to break it or, or stain it or <laughs> melt it. It's not gonna melt. Uh, apparently not, according to that box that you can see says 700 degrees Fahrenheit, 372 degrees Celsius right here. This says that what I'm doing is safe. So we'll see. Okay, now it's only been five minutes, but we realized we don't have pot holders safe to, to by the way, MSNK, you owe us a pot holder. Our pot holder um, kind of melted, just trying to move some stuff in there. So if you have any doubt whether our, our oven is actually set to 550, I wanna give you three bits of evidence. Number one, I mean, it says it is, right? But just in case you think that, you know, that's fake and we just turned it there to hit record real, quite, real fast. We literally burnt through our pot holder. And number three, watch the smoke that comes out of here. I don't know if that was visible. Yes, it was. Was it visible? <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm getting a sunburn here. I'm gonna grab it real quick and get oh, it out of Oh, please be careful. Woo, that is hot. <laughs> That is so odd. I'm gonna turn this off. These are brand new pot holders too. These are about oh. like pot holders I've had for 15 years. No, these are Christmas gifts. Yeah. Okay. Again, MSMK, come on. We're teasing, but seriously, no, like you- No, I'm not. You're always a pot holder. <laughs> pot holder. <laughs> I'm not even- I'm not kidding. You're gonna lose skin if you can- I'm just trying to do this. Like, yeah, all of it, all of it started to turn to ash and it's just all there on the edge. And I'm just showing that what you do see is just coming right off, you know? So it's not not sticking. I think it's on the bottom, none of this sticks. So I would say that is, uh, we got little bits of, you can see we got little bits of milk on the outside, so that burned, but man, it survives and it looks good. Uh, it was in there five minutes. I don't know if that's long enough, but we just, you know, we don't feel safe going beyond that when I don't have something I know I can grab it and safely get it out of there. I don't know, but I feel like this is, no, you think this is a pass? Yeah, I it's think it's a pass. pass. I absolutely do. We don't have anything that's uh handles would have my handles would have melted by then, so and we don't have anything that's uh that can get up to seven hundred degrees, but five fifty stress tested we'd say passed. So uh I'm gonna try to get working on cooling this puppy down and getting it cleaned so Melanie and Katie can use it for dinner. Uh now back to them. Okay, so here's a brief overview of my recipe. We're gonna fry the chicken in a shallow bath of oil and butter. And then we finish it off in the oven. So you know your oil is ready when you dip the tip of the chicken in the oil and it sizzles. You hear it? Yeah. Okay. And then you always move it away from your body. Okay, you can do the next one. There it goes, careful. You notice how mom laid it in going away from you. Okay, so grab one end. Gently pinch the chicken. Otherwise like the, the crumbs could go off. Yeah, like that. Away from away you? Away from you. Oh. So you're gonna Here. do it like this. And then lay oh. that way. There you go. There you go. Okay, okay, do another one on your own, on your own. You'll find a way that feels normal. There you go, good. There, good, yes. Good job. Wanna do, okay. you can put a couple more in there. My pan, I can only get three or four. So this is cool that I can get at least four. I do note, I did notice that your pan starts to slope closer to the middle. Yeah. This one is flatter further across and then goes up at the end, which you're which right. Which is means, convenient for a big family. It means, because it's weird that some 12 inch pans, will say they're 12 inches, but they start to slope at 10 inches in. So they create the illusion, like they create the illusion that they're a 12 inch pan, but there's not a lot, of, a lot of room in there. No. Okay, so mom, for your recipe, how long does it cook on each side? Three minutes. Okay, three and, uh, three minutes and you can check it at the end of those three oil. minutes. Yeah. You were telling Katie not to flip too soon or else what's hap what the happens? The breadcrumbs fall off. Yeah. I'm yeah. saying this from experience. This is why I don't use this recipe a lot because without multiple hands, too many things can go awry. And then with my kids, like I get distracted and <laughs> I have burned oil before and ruined it. Oh, come on, okay. come on. We just said that you've messed up pans. I've don't don't tell pans. people so much in one video. I, I guess know, I started right? it. Yeah, Sorry. Did. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure this is ready to flip. Gently. Look how golden brown oh, that looks. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that looks good. That looks so good, right? <laughs> oh, man. That looks like mom's chicken farm. You want to do another one? Katie, you want to do one? You want to flip one over? Hold, just be real hold it back here like yeah. you're going to do. Careful. Go on. I'm on a wide angle here because I don't want to get close. 
There. Okay. Yep. That one's Go on. good. You got it. Good yeah. job. Oh, good yes. Job. We didn't lose one breadcrumb. Not even one. Thank you, Lord. Flip those other two. Yep. And then it kind of goes without saying for anyone who's like, hey, I want to try something like this. But if you're thicker pieces of chicken, right. thinner pieces of chicken, at this stage, it doesn't matter because it's not about the thickness of the chicken. Right. It's getting them looking the same on either That's side right. because in the oven is where you finish depending on thickness. Right. So you will sometimes take a thermometer and put one thermometer in a thin piece, That's right. the other th thermo thermometer in the largest piece, and then watch them yep. to start taking them out actually one at a time and let That's the thicker right. ones stay in longer, That's right. right? Okay. Those look great, girls. Those look good. I'm hungry. There we go. Now we're putting cheese on each piece. They taste so good. So, so good. You did a great job. And you did a great job teaching. Okay, so she's putting just a piece of cheese on each one, and then they're gonna go back in. We gotta turn the broiler on, right? The broiler. So we uh, lift a rack to the top of the oven to get it close to the broiler, so it, it kind of bubbles the cheese a little bit. Delicious, delicious, delicious. And we're um, cutting each piece of cheese in half to make it the shape of our chicken. I mean, I like extra cheese. I'm good with extra cheese. Yeah. There we go. Oh. Mom's over here starting to boil the noodles. Ooh, Nothing special hot. here. They're not homemade. They are. Um, are you kidding me? They're just Baria uh, brand. Gluten free. Yeah, they are gluten free. We prefer a nice, light, gluten free noodle over the noodles that have gluten. They just seem so much thicker. Years ago, Mom went gluten free for her thyroid, and we've never looked back. We've gone to all gluten free noodles, and we love it that way. Yeah, non-gluten free are so heavy. Yeah, now we can't go back. So yeah, exactly. Oh, Katie, yeah, look at that. Oh, nothing Good like job. That. Good job. Oh. oh, boy. Way to go. Way to go. What does everybody think? Looks amazing. Yes, 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 yes. We hope you enjoyed today's videos with you. Katie did a great job. This recipe is not easy and she did a fabulous job. I can't wait to see us do more videos like this. Yeah, and we're gonna dig in. We love you, Zoo family. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.